are one day from the launch of the GTA Online Bottom Dollar Bounties update. So before it launches, we're going to get you up to speed and tell you absolutely everything you need to know before it goes live. Rockstar has kind of drip fed this information to us over the past month, so you probably haven't seen every video covering it. So I've got you covered. This is the only video you really need to watch before it goes live. So first, let's talk about all of the new vehicles. We have eight vehicles confirmed. What we don't have confirmed is if all of these will be coming on day one. Anyway, let's go through them one by one here now. Here we've got the police Greenwood, which of course is the Greenwood that's been in the game for a while. Just now there's going to be a new variant of it with a police skin. You'll most likely be able to use this in the vigilante type missions we'll cover a bit later, but just basing off of what Rockstar did with the Chop Shop DLC, police cars are very, very expensive. So I would say you can expect between three and four million dollars for this vehicle. Here we have another new vehicle. This is based off the Envision 74 in real life, which is a hydrogen electric concept car from Hyundai. This kind of looks and feels like a tuner's vehicle to me, and just basing off what this type of car has been worth in the past, I'm going to say it should be between $1.5 to $2 million, maybe a little bit more, but I would expect somewhere around $2 million. We've also got the bottom dollar bounties de class burrito, and this looks like the main vehicle we're going to be using for the business, so I'm going to assume we don't have to buy it. I could be wrong on that, but I think this vehicle is going to be required for this business, so this should come with the business. Here we see another new police car. This is the Impaler SZ. Yet again, just like the Greenwood, I would say somewhere between three to four million dollars. That seems like the sweet point for Rockstar for a lot of these police cars. And as well, don't forget, you are probably going to want to customize this one as well. So you might be looking at one to two million dollars more just customizing these vehicles. And here we see our final new police car that's confirmed. It's the Bravado Dorado. Again, I would save about three to four million dollars for this one just in case, as well as a couple million more to customize it. Here we've got the Overflowed Pipistrello, which is the new supercar coming with this update. Now this one is going to be free for all GTA Plus members, and on day one, no one else will be able to buy it. For players that don't have GTA Plus, you're going to have to wait one week. As for a price point, I'm going to assume about $3 million. It looks like a futuristic type of supercar or hypercar. In the past, Rockstar pretty much always prices these at around the 2.7 to $3 million range. So $3 million is what I'm going to guess. Moving on to the final shot of the DLC here, we see what looks like a Bentley. Not too sure what class Rockstar is going to put this one in just yet. Honestly, just judging by the look of it, I kind of feel like this might be an Amani Tech vehicle. That's not confirmed, but that's just a guess. And as for a price point, again, I would say around the two million to three million, probably two to two and a half million dollar range, just based off what Rockstar normally prices this type of vehicle at. And for our final new vehicle, we actually don't get an in-game look at this one. We only really see this one on the artwork. This is a Mercedes. And again, I'm kind of getting like a street racing tuners type of vibe from this one. So I would expect around that $1.5 to $2 million range yet again. We've also got a new business coming in. This is going to be a bail enforcement and bounty business called a bottom dollar bail enforcement. Now, as for the location of this, this is actually right across the street from the Mission Road police station. So you can see in-game. Game, it's going to be right here. Unfortunately, we don't have confirmation on whether there's going to be multiple of these businesses around the map. At this stage, it kind of looks like it's just going to be the one in the same location, but we'll have to wait and see. And just basing off what Rockstar normally prices businesses at, you can probably expect to be able to buy one for as cheap as about 1.8 million, I would guess. But if you want one that has all of the upgrades and everything inside, it's probably going to cost you all the way up to like $5 million. So overall, for for this DLC, I would aim for your last minute grinding to try and get somewhere around $30 million. That's normally what I recommend. That's if you're trying to buy absolutely everything. But if you only want like one or two vehicles and the new business, then hey, about $10 million should be enough. Let's dive into the rest of the new content coming and then we'll finish the video off with the experience improvements that have been confirmed. So not only will we be getting this business, which is a bail enforcement business, where we go out and I guess kind of arrest people who have bounties or have left bail. Our job is going to be go out, get them, bring them back to the bail enforcement company here and throw them in a cell. Our two point of contacts for this business are going to be Maud and Jeanette Eccles. Maud Eccles, of course, was in the single player for GTA 5 
Five, you might remember her, and Jeanette is her daughter. Apart from that business, Vincent Effenberger is back from the Clock and Bell farm raid, and he's gonna have some new stuff for us to do. The way Rockstar describes these kind of makes them seem like vigilante missions from previous GTA games. If you've played other GTAs, whenever you get in a police car, you can start sort of short missions where you go out and hunt down criminals. Rockstar hasn't officially called these vigilante missions just yet. They're calling them dispatch work, but they feel like they're gonna be exactly the same as vigilante missions. And that's pretty much it for the new content. So we've got the business that might have a little storyline with it, not too sure. But we're gonna go out, do all of these bounties and bail enforcement things, and then we've also got those vigilante missions. Let's move into the experience improvements. And it looks like one of the main improvements Sadly, for most people, I guess if you got GTA Plus, you'd be happy about this, but it looks like one of the main changes is coming to GTA Plus. Of course, if you have GTA Plus, you can get the Vinewood Club Garage, which is a 100 car garage on the south side of Los Santos. Well, that's getting a vehicle workshop added to it. And also, if you're a GTA Plus member, you'll be getting a new app in your phone in-game for the Vinewood Club. Rockstar says this is going to facilitate even easier access to the club's special advantages, so we'll have to wait and see as to what exactly that means. Other experience changes, though, we do have some good ones for all of the other players who don't have GTA Plus, which is most of us, I would assume. We're going to be getting increased payouts on open wheel races, taxi work, and some contact missions as well, including the Agent ULP ones. I wouldn't expect massive payout increases, to be honest. Normally when Rockstar does this, it's like a 50% bonus, but I'm not complaining. Taxi work is very, very bad, so something like that getting a buff is very good, and I'm actually pretty happy about the open wheel races too, because they're really fun. And if more people start doing those, I'd be pretty happy. We've also got some changes to biker businesses and bunkers as well. Some of the cell missions for those ones are gonna be getting increased timers, so you don't need to rush and do them within 15 minutes. I know a lot of solo players will be happy about that one. Still wouldn't recommend trying to do a full business sale in a public lobby, but this is nice. Your snacks will automatically be refilled when you're starting most missions. That's pretty huge. And a couple of vehicles are getting a buff as well. The Sparrow and Bombushka, as well as more, Rockstar says, will be getting defensive and armor capability upgrades. We'll have to wait and see exactly how much better they are, but that's pretty cool to see. We've also got some improvements coming to the race creator. You can now create your own drift and drag races, as well as add some new animations to the crowd, for example, where cars in the distance can be doing donuts. There'll be new crowd animations and just cool things like that. If you've made it this far, you probably want to know when you can actually play it. Well, it's available to pre-download now on PS5 and PS4, but Tuesday, June 25, and depending on where you live, it'll be at a different time. So we'll wrap the video up there. Overall, it's looking like it'll be a cool little update. I say little update, I don't think it's going to be a massive one. I think something in line with the Chop Shop last year, which is what we should probably expect from GTA Online updates going forward. I think the days of getting heists and things like the contracts are behind us because we're only one year away from GTA 6, which is also really, really exciting. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more stuff like this, and I'll see you in the next video.